Oh boy, look what we have today here. Nothingwire.com guys and you're looking at the brand new Motorola Moto E. Now we're really really excited to be reviewing this device, especially after the standard that the Moto G has set at its price point. What an incredible comeback this has been for Motorola. So in this review video, we're gonna talk about what's in the box here. We're gonna talk about the device, its hardware, the user interface, the performance, camera, browser, multimedia, benchmarking, and hopefully at last you'll be able to decide whether this guy is worth your time and money so let's get started you see the Motorola Moto E comes in a fairly compact box just like in case of the Moto G you can see there the Motorola Moto E and at first look it looks much like the Moto G and nothing much here you have some quick specs here there's a 4 GB of internal storage you can see the MRP you would see 7199 but it's selling only via Flipkart for 6999 on the this side you get some quick specs here uh, it says that you have uh, some colorful Motorola shells available uh, meaning the back cover so uh, actually nine colors to be precise you have Corning Gorilla Glass 3 protection it's water resistant coating uh, 1980 mAh battery then it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 200 processor um, then Moto E delivers a fast Android experience because it has the stock Android KitKat, Roam, Google Maps, YouTube and more you have some of the icons of the default Google um, apps that you're gonna find on the Moto E so without further ado let's see what's in the box so as usual on top you get the phone so that's your Moto E but we're gonna come back to the phone just in a bit we're gonna see what else are in the box so you have a fairly standard set of earphones they are not exactly your noise cancelling type you have the silver plated audio jack and only um, the mic here and the call control so no volume rocker here then you have your round pin wall charger micro usb 2.0 port you know? and then we have some documents here because it's india you get it in hindi then english yeah you have your protection um some instructions here and then your warranty document so all these aside let's take a look at our motorola moto e right here you see let's first remove the protection here much like the moto g the only differentiation factor is here so you have the Moto E's body slightly smaller than the Moto G, about half the price and rest of the body looks almost the same except probably this part the Moto G does not have this bar and even this bar is kind of slightly different and it's more like a net the um, ear pieces are more prominent on the Moto G. So can you go wrong anywhere with the Moto E here? Let's see. So the first thing you have is an edge to edge glass design that's our favorite we absolutely love this kind of designs this give you a feeling that probably the whole a uh, the whole glass is a display the display is kind of very nicely you know dissolving in the glass we absolutely love that feeling it also has very thin bezels you see again much too pleasant and then on top and below well you have a uh, space wasted there but then uh, it actually used for kind of show off so that's fine your soft keys are on the screen actually so uh, even though you have a 4.3 inch screen that space effectively makes your real estate slightly smaller so smaller than the 4.5 inch Moto G the Moto E has a 4.3 inch screen diagonally it has 450 by 960 pixels of resolution it also has Corning Gorilla Glass 3 protection and it also is uh, apparently splash resistant glass so there you see it kind of repels the water you know? cool so apart from that <laughs> well I'll just come back 
so there you see just a wipe and everything's sunny again so you have your earpiece on top no front camera you have um, the speaker here and then on the left side you have pretty much nothing below you have the micro USB 2.0 port no micro no no mouthpiece on the right side you have the volume rocker the power button and on top you have the noise cancelling mic and then the 3.5 mm jack at 12 and half mm thickness this is certainly not the thinnest device in the market in fact it looks quite fat and bulky but then that actually works in your favor this kind of fits right into your hand and does not slip off mainly because of this you know, pebble design this pebble boat ship design this kind of fits right into your palm and the matte finish on the back really really helps that so then your 5 mp fixed focus camera no led flash the motorola branding and that's about it so you can open the back flap and inside you will find the non user replaceable 1980 mh battery so you can take it to the service center if it's um, gets spoiled and they can probably open it even if you if you have also the specific screwdrivers probably even you'll be able to open this but that's kind of non replaceable out of the box or easily let's say uh, your dual micro sim slot and then your micro sd card slot it supports up to 32 gb uh, in addition to the internal 4GB already available. So this guy is powered by a Snapdragon 200 chip jet and then you have Adreno 302 graphics card and 1GB RAM. So although it looks much like the Moto G there are differences in the looks there are also differences in the build quality I'll tell you. Uh, to start with see the sound. So you see it's it's not exactly great finish you can it kind of rickety and loose at places yeah? and then one of the most annoying thing that we faced over our few days of usage the Moto G's button here used to give absolutely crazy feedback and these buttons go that much in the negative way these are really really bad and um you know what aggravates the situation is that you see the back the back side of the mobile here is actually larger than the front you can see it's kind of this side is you know slanting towards the front so the front face here is smaller than the back face so basically whenever you're uh, tapping this button or this button you'll actually have to go like this and then hit it otherwise it does not get pressed properly so so you really need to give force and come like this so um, I know I mean it needs really close observation but that's what I felt and you'll feel this as well so Motorola probably could have given these buttons a little larger or probably a little more protruding so that you know we could press them easier but that's one of the most annoying factors the Moto E is powered by Android 4.4.2 KitKat that's the latest one available right now and it runs the stock ROM that means absolute smoothness and power is what you can expect. You see on the lock screen you can straight away go to Google now unlock screen it already went to Google now anyway so then you get to the home screen so five home screen you cannot add or remove any you can long press on the home screen to add your galleries or wallpapers or photos notification bar there and then your quick function toggle bar yeah. your app dock is customizable you can create folders simply by dragging one app onto another and then long press on the home key again drag it to Google now and then your recent app menu there is no close all button that should have been anyway so there are not many widgets here so it's absolutely smooth but even when you load the uh, home pages with widgets it still is absolutely lag free absolutely lag free and even though it has only 1 GB of RAM a dual core Snapdragon 200 processor that's an age old processor but because there is no bloatware it's a pure uh, vanilla Android so you get that experience as well so this kind of you can call a poor man's nexus then you have your app collections again no bloatware at all you can see almost everything 
uh, is Google's or Motorola. So you have Google's own Chrome, uh, your Google Drive, Gmail, Google Plus, Google Hangout, then Maps, um, Play Games, Play Movies, Play Music. So almost all the tools that you use, whether it's browser or to play music or to watch movies or to play games, everything is of Google's and they are very, very tightly integrated into the vanilla room. And then you also have some of Motorola's in-house tools like the Alert and then the Assist. Yeah. Also have Motorola Migrate somewhere there you see. Yeah. YouTube from Google so no extra app no bloatware no reduction in speed and it's absolutely smooth now this is uh, there's one good thing about Motorola whatever the price point because of the vanilla Android ROM you get speed smoothness and there's no bloatware no lag whatsoever how much ever uh, you multitask how much ever you have um, you know how many numbers of app you have playing on the background no lag whatsoever yeah so let's check out some of the apps now quickly so you have motorola alert which is a new app where you can actually go ahead and register a name of one of your loved ones or you can also give your local emergency number for example 100 uh, or 911 and then you can have your emergency mode and the moment you press this it will automatically send a message to the loved ones see i can cancel it and if i don't cancel it it will straight away send a message to the number that i've registered here and I send them location every five minutes or however i want in the settings pane you can see there so that's the custom uh, message you can customize it of course I'm in danger need your help and then you can have your location sent every five minutes or ten minutes yeah. and then your Motorola assist which is kind of an automation tool so when you have meeting you can simply choose your actions you can simply say silence from this time to this time you know Something like that then again it's for sleeping as well so you can go to sleep and you can uh, tell it your sleeping time let's say from 12 till 7 and then you can choose your actions you can choose uh, the phone to be in silent or you can also have silent except if one of your favorite contacts call or if someone calls twice within five minutes then that person could be in a hurry or could be desperate to reach you and that could be important apart from that you have the 5 MP fixed focus camera yeah and it's kind of has the most straightforward UI here so to take still simply tap and it takes about half an hour to process the image yeah and then press here to take the video they see Tap on the video to take the stills. Yeah. You can also drag from below to zoom. Maximum of 4x. Remember it's a digital zoom. It's always a digital zoom. And then 1x. You can also drag from this side to go to the settings. There you can have your HDR auto or on or off. You can also have the control exposure on which I generally recommend keeping it on so wherever you wanna point let's say my finger here so you can simply drag it here and there you see drag it here and it takes this exposure and this is all white and my finger becomes darker take it on top of my finger and kind of tries to correct the exposure on my finger nice then you have your panorama mode GPS and then saving to your card or phone etc and then you have your widescreen or 4x3 I like it 4x3 I like to record at a widescreen but then take still at 4x3 and then your shutter sound or not see yeah so that's about it so uh, for a 5MP fixed camera do not expect much uh, if you want to just uh, capture the information or you want to just 
I'll probably check into your Facebook or a post a photo on your Twitter bragging about um, you know you being in that place or something then that's quite good but then don't expect art in the photography or videography of this 5 MP fixed camera there are two problems and one is of course so fixed camera so um, everything is in focus and you cannot make your subject stand out and because everything is in focus it's you who will have to move to um, you know for the detail so in general details are very very less even um, because of the less megapixel count number two is it does not have an LED flash so under low light you have no light assistant anyway so your low light photographs also shows a lot of noise so the camera is one of the cons of the Motorola and it's been one of the cons of the Motorola device for long as much as I remember and then you have the default Chrome browser so I'm not gonna show that to you you know you've seen it probably a zillion times then you have your FM radio which does not play without your earphones plugged in and then you have your gallery See like the vanilla all your photos are arranged in stacks so you can go to any one of these photos and you can edit it here you have this filters and stuff FX frames and crop and mirroring and then you can also set exposure and some other lot of stuff you can also go ahead and you can share by all this means and as you install um, third-party apps let's say for example Twitter or Facebook or Dropbox where you can share this photo those options will start coming here you know? then you can also delete it you can crop and set picture as your wallpapers and stuff you can also by the way select multiple pictures or videos alike and you can share them by all these means however you cannot batch edit them remember you know? so they taking this opportunity let us show you the display a bit yeah. The 540 by 960 pixel display uh, is quite enough for this 4.3 inch screen really and you would see that the viewing angles are amazing. You see? They are pretty darn amazing. But at some point the reflection takes over but then you're not gonna watch something from here so it's for most part it's absolutely killer and the colors are also you know quite nice natural natural um, saturation and hue and there see how bad the low light performance is I cannot see anywhere they are all trees here let's see the colors it does not overdo the saturation much but I see uh, only slightly towards the pink side becomes slightly oversaturated you see this part but other than the pink rest of us are the same so let's go ahead and check out a video that will also give you an idea of how the speaker works on the video Absolutely no fuzziness, no discoloration, and I have the brightness in auto, mind you. The blacks are very, very deep. See, crazy viewing angle. No discoloration. The metallic shine here is so cool. And now you must save it. Take the five. On top of that, you'd see even the sound through the speaker is very, very good. It's not the loudest, but then it certainly um, is loud enough and also has the perfect mix of bass and treble. It's see? Time for the next phase of your journey. My fist hungers for justice. That was my fist. And because the speaker is situated here, it comes right at your face without any obstruction. Got it. Stealth mode. 
yeah so I'm gonna give you another demo of music to see how the multimedia performs in totality so let's go ahead and check out this song I'm staying up I'm wilding out So here the sound a bit shrieky. Yeah, so after all you'll see that the music and the sound output via speaker is pretty satisfactory it's also very good via the earphone so we don't have any problems um, in the multimedia section we don't have any problems in the display section as well so just to give you an idea of the ui of course you must have seen the google music ui so you have your library and playlist here yeah it can also sync music from the uh, cloud we have the phone so you can see a pretty big dialer also go and add a two second pause good so so far so good let's check out the settings at last so you have the typical KitKat vanilla settings so you have your um, dual sim settings first yeah I don't have my second sim here anywhere and then you have your connection settings mobile settings and all no NFC no Wi-Fi direct and all those jazz you have your display you have your storage there you see 1.32 GB available only so uh, if you are used to playing big games like Nova 3 or Asphalt 8 or um, you know even something like Mortal Kombat or something then you're out of luck you probably will be able to play Dead Trigger 2 or maybe FIFA 14 but not even FIFA 14 so anything that's less than 1.32 GB in the app you can play that now a lot of people ask me this and a lot of people get confused they say you can move the games to the SD card and then you should be able to play but then to be able to move the um, app to the SD card you first have to download the game the game um, app uh, on your phone first and if you cannot download that how can you transfer the app or the data to the SD card so the data basically can straight away go to the SD card but then the game itself is so big nowadays for example Nova 2 the game itself is over 2 GB and then your data so uh, in that cases you cannot play those games here one of the disappointments you can add this many accounts and then you see about phone 4.4.2 Moto E one of the biggest selling point KitKat at this price point not a lot of device give you KitKat so that's about the UI we talked about the performance the call quality is excellent even uh, when you have full volume does not crackle both of the parties could hear the sounds properly there are no dead air no reflections of the voice and everything's perfect and sunny so at 7000 bucks only from KitKat everyone will make you believe that this guy is a perfect buy so is it now let's discuss now let's discuss some of the good points the good point is first of all 4.3 inch screen very very good and crisp display you have KitKat and the uh, heck the price itself 7000 or about a hundred dollars is a steal for this kind of a phone that like you know no lag uh, none whatsoever how much ever 
uh, you multitask because uh, it has the vanilla Android ROM. So those are some of the good things. And the bad things are also pretty annoying. First thing as I told you, this buttons here, not enough feedback. Number two, your camera is fixed focus and no LED flash. And number three is only 4 GB internal memory of which you uh, typically get about 1.3 GB. So you cannot play the big games. You cannot play the games or apps that are sized over that 1.3 GB. And there are a lot of those. Most of the good games, top games uh, these days are more than 1.3 GB. So, uh, even after that, I guess at 7000, no device will give you this bargain, this Moto E. So whatever the world says, the Moto E could be the best budget phone. We agree to that. Um, mainly, you know, relatively uh, to the other phones because the other phones at this price range probably will lag a lot. Uh, you would get the premium Asha phones. You would also get a Lumia phone, the 520, which is like age old. You know, the Android phones at this price point will, uh, will lag a lot and uh, will have a much more pixelated and much worse display than this one. So at 7,000 Indian rupees or about 100 US dollars, despite these two or three, um, you know, downsides, the Moto E is the best device to buy right now in the market. If you like this video, please hit the like button, ask any related questions and we'll be happy to answer those and please subscribe to our channel for more such awesome content in the future. This is Pallab from nothingwire.com. Thank you.